right. So my name is Alan Pichatello. I'm the Vice President of Product at Blockstream. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the Liquid Network. And this is something we've been building for a long time, since the founding of the company nearly five years ago, and how it can be the, the backbone of a new financial system. So first thing I'm going to talk about is Blockstream, what we do, and the Liquid Network. It gives you some background on how it works, how, how the interactions happen, how the consensus happens, and how assets are, are handled and talk about the requirements for building a financial infrastructure. We're going to talk about, as well, why Bitcoin is special. Uh, one thing you may know about Blockstream is that we are a very Bitcoin-centric company. We're not in the blockchain space. We're very focused on uh, Bitcoin success. We do think that's an important differentiator that will be uh, available for Liquid. So we're going to talk then about why Liquid is well-suited for that and the pieces left to build to, in order to build that new financial system. All right, so at Blockstream, we work on a lot of different projects, uh, mostly all focused around Bitcoin. So the main ones we're working on right now, we have the Liquid Network, which is a side chain of Bitcoin, which means you can move Bitcoin into this network and have other properties to do things with. So you can do things like send transactions much faster and more reliably uh, due to a federated chain that has signed blocks. So this means you can settle assets in two minutes rather than something like an hour on Bitcoin. And also it has some privacy features like confidential transactions and confidential assets. And we also have the ability to create issued assets. So this can represent any arbitrary digital asset that you want on the blockchain. We built that at the native level of Liquid. We also have Blockstream Green, which is a wallet for both Bitcoin and Liquid. And so it's uh, currently available on uh, iOS and Android and soon to be on desktop. We also have a, a mining operation. And so this is you know, going back into, we have a substantial stake in the success of Bitcoin and we believe mining should be de decentralized and something that is uh, protected by the people who have interest. And so we do our own mining, but we also do hosting for parties that want to have their mining hosted as well. We also use a satellite service to broadcast the Bitcoin blockchain from space. So this is something that can help uh, alleviate any type of problems where the networks might diverge due to some type of network outage or other kind of infrastructure failure. You can always, you know, as long as you have a satellite dish that can point at the sky, you'll have an additional source of data to know what is actually real in Bitcoin. Well, we also work with uh, the Intercontinental Exchange Group. Uh, this is the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange and many other exchanges around the world, uh, providing a cryptocurrency data feed. So this is to get accurate pricing information, order books, trades, what's happening out in the world so that financial institutions can make quality decisions regarding cryptocurrency trades. And we also have Elements, which is the open source blockchain platform which Liquid is built upon. So Elements is used by other companies as well to make their own blockchain networks uh, or their own blockchains and is the basis of Liquid. So we've spent a lot of time on the infrastructure pieces needed for, to build this new financial system. A lot of work is needed to do this. So we, we do spend a lot of time uh, working on Bitcoin. We have a developer fully devel uh, devoted to working on the Bitcoin uh, protocol and, and other ecosystems. So we work on uh, something called Explorer, which is a block explorer for both Bitcoin and Liquid. Uh, we work on the Lightning Network, which is a way to scale beyond the capacities that, that are restricted by having a blockchain. So the Lightning Network will enable much faster and more uh, che uh, cheaper transactions than you'd have on an on-chain settlement platform. And one of the other important parts that we have in here is for reliability of writing these types of uh, scripts in blockchain language. So what we do is we work on something called simplicity. Uh, and so right now, simplicity is built to be, to be extremely simple. There's a t-shirt we have that has the whole language constructs on it. And the idea of it is it can all be provably verified. So simplicity is by nature very simple. Uh, and that means you can have a high degree of assurance that it's doing something correct. Uh, compare this to other types of smart contracting languages that, le that are very easy to program, but they're very complex. They have a lot of different syntax, and they've led to very catastrophic bugs where something looks correct, but there's no way to formally analyze it to know it actually is correct, and that leads to monetary losses. And that's something, something that's not acceptable in a financial situation. 
Uh, we also work on a, something for Bitcoin called Miniscript. It's not actually a new scripting language, but it's, it's a way to represent existing Bitcoin scripts or liquid scripts in a very simple format. So this is something that's very beneficial uh, if you want to take something and analyze it in Bitcoin to say, you know, what are the conditions in, in this multi-signature complex uh, script? What does it actually boil down to? And this is something that's helped us tremendously on both Lightning Network and on Liquid. All right, so I'm going to dive a little bit more details on how Liquid actually works. So as I mentioned, Liquid is a side chain of Bitcoin, and this is something that was really crucial to the founding of the company was, was the uh, side chain's white paper. And so the idea is that you have Bitcoin, which is very hard to change. You can't easily you know, add new features. It's something that takes a long time. It has a great deal of uh, consensus needed and review. And it may have different types of security trade-offs or different choices to, that can be made on a side chain. But you want to take advantage of the fact that Bitcoin, the asset, is actually what you want to use here. So in this case, uh, you have something, you have Bitcoin that exists, and it can move into the liquid side chain. And by moving into the liquid side chain, now you unlock all kinds of new properties. So the main things we really unlock with liquid are fi uh, the finality of settlement in two minutes, uh, confidential transactions, and the ability to have other assets that can be then swapped in a single tra transaction in the liquid chain. And likewise, when you're done using the, the, the Bitcoin on the liquid chain, you can move it back to the Bitcoin side. And liquid's secured by a set of functionaries. And so this is a group currently of 15, but should be growing in the next year, of uh, 15 different members of the network that are actually uh, securing the blocks of the uh, liquid sidechain, as well as securing the underlying Bitcoin. So in this example right here, we have 15 of them, and 11 of them must actually agree to create these new blocks on the liquid side chain. And since we have greater than two thirds, we know that as long as they're operating properly, we will only have the blockchain moving forward uh, beyond that point. They can stop any type of divergence beyond one block. And that's really important for the settlement of assets. Uh, one thing that you might see is a lot of these asset platforms that exist that use something like proof of work have a very hard time to actually un understand when something is Final. In any kind of mind, anonymous uh, mind situation, you have a, the case where a transaction rollback could happen. Uh, and assets this gets particularly challenging because the value of the assets themselves can very quickly exceed the value of the underlying chain. So the normal economic incentives that make sense for something like Bitcoin no longer apply for these asset based chains where the assets greatly outvalue the, the, of what's happening. Um, because it does rely on the set of functionaries, we have cryptographic proof if those assumptions are ever broken. So even if you created an asset on Liquid, and even if the Federation decided to do something and roll back, everyone has proof that this is actually, you know, they've violated that promise, and the issuer of the asset can know what that state was before that happened. So this is something that's, you know, very crucial for something like a centralized issued asset. Meanwhile, you also have Bitcoin on the side chain. And again, it has a different security trade-off than you would have on Bitcoin. It is secured by this supermajority of functionaries. Uh, and in that case, you want to think about that in terms of use cases where you, know, you might otherwise have a small number of custodians. So something like exchange to exchange transfer. If I'm a trader and I'm trying to use one exchange, and I'm trying to send money to another exchange, well, I've already trusted one exchange with all of my access to the funds. Whereas with Liquid, I'm expanding that set out to an 11 out of 15, which is going to be much more secure for those types of applications. I also mentioned Liquid has the ability to create issued assets. I see the animations aren't uh, working because it's PDF now, but uh, in this case, you can create assets in Liquid at the native level through a single API call, no smart contract needed, and the guarantees of correctness of is this, you know, what is the total supply of this asset? When has it been created? Uh, you can use this to do represent things like uh, security tokens, stable coins, uh, uh, and other digital assets. So this is something that, that is built in. You don't have to create a smart contract. It's at the native level. And then when you create a transaction in Liquid, it's just like interacting with any other uh, first level asset like Bitcoin. 
So one of the features I mentioned here is confidential transactions. So this is our uh, block stream.info block explorer for Liquid. And in a normal block explorer, you would see a lot of information about, about the transactions. And this is something that reveals a great deal out to the public uh, and can be very damaging for you. So if I send someone a transaction, not only am I revealing to them where I came from, but I, it might reveal how much funds I have. So imagine if you're paying your landlord and he now has access to know how much your bank account is. That's something that's very damaging to your privacy and, and he could know whether to raise the rates or not. Uh, if you're paying, you know, if your suppliers see what you have access to, this is something that's very damaging to you. If your competitors see what your, you know, what your assets are and what prices you're paying for things, that's something that's very damaging for you. So this is where confidential transactions come in handy. So this is a transaction. Uh, what this actually is, is, is a swap of Tether for Bitcoin. And there's two parties involved in this, and each of them have provided some inputs and are getting some of the outputs of it. And what I can see from this transaction is really just the addresses and what's being spent. But to the general public, the only reason I know that was because I made this transaction. Someone who's just looking at the Block Explorer, all they're seeing is confidential. They don't know what asset was sent. They don't know how much of it was sent. They don't know, they might be able to piece together some, some of the who's in here because of the address linkage, depending on how uh, the, the user manages their privacy. Uh, the only information that I have in here is the transaction fees. So this is something that's very crucial for the financial system that we would like to build. So if you're building a new financial system, what, what features does it need to have? It needs to be correct. You need to write something that does what you expect it to do. You need to have it stable. You need to actually have the system be able to effectively settle the assets at the end of the day. It needs to have some sense of finality at some point that can be defined by the participants in it. And you need to have assurance that, that it is going to be final at that state. Confidentiality is important. You cannot reveal all this information to all your competitors, suppliers, uh, trading partners. It needs to be available. It needs to be independent, so it can't just be manipulated by a third, central third party. And it needs to have liquidity. So looking at the current financial system of the world, what do we have out here? And really, it's, it's pretty much a mess. Uh, it's, there's been a lot of ways to try to improve that over the years. Uh, but if you're talking about equities and how they're transferred, there's just times where no one necessarily even knows who owns what. And there's been times where you know there's been more stock actually represented by people who think they own it than actually was ever uh, printed. And this is because our system right now is just, just, just kind of a disaster. Uh, it, we've tried to fix it by centralizing it and having a single owner and single authority and all these trusted third parties that try to get in the mix. But it's still, you don't really know that it's right. Our system's built on a high amount of leverage and systemic risks. So when something goes wrong, you may have be the victim of a, a, of a trade that, that actually can't settle. And due to that, you, you don't have a lot of finality. These trades take a long time to actually execute. And you know, it could take two, three, four days before you actually know whether it actually happened or not. So this is something that's, that's very hard. There's, able, there's the ability to reverse transactions, and then you're just trying to seek damages. And there's all these layers of third parties that need to compensate each other. And that, of course, adds cost to the system. Uh, confidentiality is also an issue we have. Uh, it relies a lot on trusted third parties. There are hundreds of millions of dollars of fines levied against uh, different financial institutions that allegedly will you know, front run against those trades. Uh, that there's been a lot of suspicious behavior when you know you reveal what you're trying to do, and parties can take advantage of that. And right now, it's, it's just pure trust of the party. Uh, we believe we can do better than that. There's limited availability for trading. Uh, this is only you know certain market hours that they're even available. Uh, there's centralized authorities that actually can control and manipulate everything from the whole money supply, from being able to manipulate and uh, rehypothecate assets. This is all something that is uh, you know, very controlled and centralized right now. Now, the one advantage I would say that the current system does have is it's based on uh, high liquidity currencies like the USD. Uh, so this is something where you, know, you do have a very liquid market, and we're not quite there yet. So why do we think Bitcoin is special? Why do we build this whole company on Bitcoin? Um, you know, everyone else here is talking about blockchain and just in general. 
we think Bitcoin is the most special part of uh, the innovation of blockchain. So why does it really matter? We require s sound money to settle. You need something with a high amount of liquidity. As for cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin is you know, far ahead of anyone else there. It requires few trusted third parties. There's no foundation for Bitcoin in control. There's no uh, developers that, that really have control of this asset. And that it holds value over time. And something, you know, we're celebrating Bitcoin's 11th birthday of the white paper uh, yesterday. It's existed for a long time. It's held its value. It's stood the test of time. Uh, and it really has, you know, starting to get that attention and, and growth. It's internationally and politically neutral. So this is something where in the, the global financial system, just relying on a single jurisdiction is, is not a recipe for success. You need something that is bigger than, than a single country. Uh, it's resistant to takeovers. We've had uh, numerous attempts over the past few years in Bitcoin where you know, different people wanted to implement different changes or control on it, and those attempts really have failed. But it still has remained uh, able to evolve over time through a slow pet, uh, process of improvements. And eventually, the goal would be for ossification, that Bitcoin just becomes so solid, so unchangeable, that it's just locked in, it has all the features that anyone else needs. So that's, that's eventually the goal, and we think that at that point, Bitcoin could be the best asset in the world for settlement. So looking at how does liquid stand up in this chart that I showed you for the current system. So correctness. Uh, we focus right now on the Bitcoin scripting, which is much simpler than a lot of the existing smart contracts out there. And the reason is it's very simple. It's very easy to know what's going on. You can verify that it's correct. You shouldn't get any unexpected behavior. Meanwhile, we're looking to build that smart contracting language. This is something that's already built and it's just a matter of building the tooling around it so that we can actually go through formal proofs that when you're doing a transaction with complex rules and a complex smart contract, that it's doing exactly what you say it's going to do and there's no exceptions, that you can guarantee that it will execute in a certain amount of time, that there's no edge cases that you didn't think of, that it is going to be correct. Stable. So the idea here is we build a system that is built upon Bitcoin. Elements is the basis of Liquid, and Elements came as a fork from Bitcoin. So whenever Bitcoin gets an improvement, whenever Bitcoin gets reviewed or a change, those types of changes get pulled down automatically into Liquid. And so this means we have something, that, a system that already has, you know, dozens and hundreds of reviewers and committers adding value to it, and we can just benefit from that automatically. Uh, it's a rock solid financial platform, Bitcoin has had virtually no downtime uh, in its, its whole existence and been almost, you know, none of the, all of that was pretty much in the early days when there was any kind of problems. Uh, transaction finality. So one difference is we do not do the, the uh, mining. We do not have uh, uh, rollbacks where something can, can have uh, reorganizations. So you know that when you see that second block in liquid, your transaction is final, that that asset is settled. You don't have to wait. You don't have to have any unknowns. And that's done in two minutes. So this is something that is uh, very optimized compared to the existing system. We have confidential transactions as the standard in Liquid. So this means that you don't have any parties that, that are able to de decipher any information that you don't want to disclose. Meanwhile, you have the ability to disclose that information to any type of auditor or regulator. Uh, or any third party that you want to share that information with, and they can prove that it, what you told them was actually correct. Uh, high availability. So the system is built on the, the consensus system that requires two-thirds of the functionaries to be online. So right now it's 15. that only requires 11 of them to be online at any point in time. In a f future system where there's 30, then you could have up to eight functionaries down and you still have an available system. So there's a high degree of redundancy uh, built into the system. Uh, independent, this is a federation that's run by many different exchanges all around the world. I think we're on uh, five different continents. We have uh, country, you know, no country controls more than one third of the functionaries, uh, as well as having Bitcoin as the native currency, again, which is completely politically independent. And then Bitcoin as the native currency for settlement. So this is the, the one thing that, that could improve uh, over time. You know, Bitcoin is, I think, more, has a market value of more than a all but about 20 or so currencies in the world. Uh, we expect that to keep going up with time and eventually surpass everything. So at that time, you know, we would expect a preferred method of settlement, 
why would I accept US dollars when I can accept Bitcoin when I have to trust whether the Federal Reserve is going to you know, add more supply to, to, to devalue the dollar to prop up markets. So this is something where we think Bitcoin has a natural edge. All right, so we still have a lot to build left in liquid. Uh, so one of the things that we want to do, I mentioned that we have a federation of 15. We have the ability currently with, liquid, uh, with Bitcoin scripting to go up into the about 50 range. Uh, but what really we want to do is be able to have that federation grow to hundreds of parties. So every major trading financial institution will have a seat at the table and be running this network. That's going to lead to a great deal of redundancy. That's going to lead to a great deal of independence in the system. Uh, to do this, there's already changes being made in Bitcoin to handle this. So Schnorr signatures, Taproot, as well as uh, signature improvements in Bitcoin. This is something that we can do to uh, improve the size of the federation. We want to have powerful but secure smart contracts. So simplicity is something that exists. It already uh, you know, has been written. There's already tools started for it, but actually linking that into liquid and elements. So that's something that we're actually, uh, we've got uh, our first example of that that will be ready in the next few weeks, and we'll be publishing that. So that will be an exciting development to show that we can move forward with smart contracts with even more power in, in uh, liquid while maintaining that security. We want to be able to optimize transactions. So right now there's a lot of information to hide, you know, to, to be able to handle the proofs for the, the uh, confidential transactions. So we want to improve this through something called bullet proofs. Uh, and then increase throughput of the network. You know, one thing we have learned, I think even in the last talk, blockchains don't really scale very well. You don't want to have everything dependent on that base level, level of settlement. So this is something where Lightning Network comes in handy. And again, this comes back to our philosophy of building on Bitcoin. If we build on Bitcoin, we can get all of the benefits and all the ecosystem that's being created for it. So something like Lightning Network, we've already built it on liquid for liquid Bitcoin, uh, but the ability to extend that for other assets as well. So think about if you have a stable coin, you have something like Tether, you don't want to necessarily have to send an on-chain transaction for that to just buy coffee. But if you had something with Lightning Network, you could make hundreds or thousands of transactions for the same cost at, at nearly instant, uh, instant se uh, settlement. So that's, that's the last slide on this. Is there any questions in the last two minutes we have? Yes. Uh, how can we help uh, Blockstream to grow and to uh, promote Bitcoin even better for or even better future of money. How can, we, how can we help Bitcoin? So I think right now, you know, obviously there's a lot of Bitcoin projects out there that are open source and have contributors. So I think that that's probably the first level is if you have the ability to, to and knowledge to, to work there. That's, you know, we, we contribute to a variety of projects and we'd be happy to help there. I think something like Liquid itself, the Elements project is open source as well, so people can do that. It's an open network, so anyone can download a node for Liquid and build applications on top of it as well. So this is not something that requires any special membership or any privileges to be able to use. So that's, that's I think, the best way to move forward. Yes? How easy it is to issue an asset on Liquid? And is there any type of hand-holding required for you guys? Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a simple one API call. So you can just call an, uh, an API that says issue asset. How many do I want to issue? Do I want to issue more in the future? And do I want to reveal to the public how many I issued? And if you, have, if you know those three parameters, you've created an asset. So, uh, and you just need a small amount of liquid Bitcoin to pay the transaction fees. So it's an extremely simple process. Yes? How do you accept the fact that they may have to hold have, have exchanges accepted the fact that they need to hold it? Uh, so it, the exchanges have a lot of different use cases for, for using liquid. And one is to be able to improve their liquidity by being able to let traders move very quickly in and out of their platform. Uh, so this is something where you know, it will grow with time, with usage. So there's, you know, we've seen a growth of the amount of liquid Bitcoin in the network uh, over time. We expect that to keep growing as there's more adoption. Uh, so that's just something the exchanges that are in the liquid network can very easily convert it in and out as well. So this is something where they're basically matching usage. 
which ones are on the network. I've got 20 seconds, but uh, the biggest ones that is live is Bitfinex. Uh, we have an integration with BitMEX that's a little special as well. We have, um, and then about six or seven other exchanges that are, that are like ready to go live very soon. And there's uh, about 35 different exchanges that are members of the network and in different processes of uh, uh, integration. So we expect to see more uh, news on that soon. I think that's my time. All right.